Hi guys, I'm going to attempt um, an amethyst today, a tumbled amethyst. Um, I've been playing around trying to get amethyst right for so long and I think I've finally come up with a way to do a tumbled amethyst. seems to be um, a bit easier to do. Um, I'm going to be using three different colours of purple. So I've got Sculpey Primo purple here. I think it's just called purple. Where did the thing go? Yeah, purple. I'm also going to be using a little bit of Cernic Metallic Violet because we want a little bit of shimmer to come through in the amethyst. And I've actually got this um, Crafter's Craft Polymer Clay that Hobby Lobby um, have bought out. It's their new line of clay. I've been playing around with it. It's okay. It's a lot better than Sculpey 3, that's for sure. Um, so I'm just going to use a little bit of this as well and this is um what color is this da, 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 da. i can't find it i think it's called lavender oh yeah lavender steely lavender and then i've also got some sculpey primo and this is literally all the sculpey primo i've got left at the moment the shelves seem to be um stocking up a bit more nicely now but i'm still finding it hard to find um, the translucent but anyway so I've got my three shades of purple um, like so and then I've got my translucent I'm not going to make a huge stack so let's just take one section like that and just cut it into three equalish pieces like so this is all I'm going to be using, plus this. And I'm going to take just a pinch of the Sculpey Purple. I might add just a little bit more than that. Just a little bit. So, not quite pea size. A bit smaller than a pea size. I'm just going to plonk that on there. And about the same amount of the uh, lavender colour. Maybe just a fraction less than that. It's still a little big. Like so. And then roughly the same amount of the Cernic Metallic Violet. So you're using tiny amounts of colour in this. Okay, and that's all the colour you're going to need. So these all need to be mixed together, so that's what I'll go and do, but I'm not going to do a thorough mix. Actually, I'll just do it like this. I'm just going to roll it so then you can see what I mean. So just um, start to roll those little pieces out and mix up the colour but not a complete mix. Maybe one more time. So you can see it's not completely mixed and you've still got some of the dark purple showing and some of the translucent showing through. Same with this one. <clears throat> It's okay if it breaks. Just fold it over a couple of times. Uh, one more time on that one, I think. And that's it. So again, it's not completely mixed. So you can see the different shades coming through. And this exact same thing on the last little piece. I want to try and get as fragmented a look as I can with this um, amethyst. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So when you're happy with your mixes, you just got to take each of these colours and roll them out onto a number seven. Um, 
let me just put that to one side because I forgot a step. You do need some another little chunk of trans as well, just a little bit, and that's going to be rolled out into a number six. So you've got three not thoroughly mixed um, colours with trans and then just some trans on its own. So I'm going to go and roll the colours out onto number seven and I'm going to go and roll this little piece of um, translucent onto a number six and I'll be back. Okay, so they, they've all been rolled out and you can see that they are really not thoroughly mixed at all. I did take a little bit more translucent from this block to make this sheet a little bit bigger because we do need more trans than anything going through this piece. So I've only got this tiny little bit of um, Primo translucent left but I'm just going to roll it into a little block or a little um, plug. Now this is not a new technique by any means but I did see Clay Zoo, which I, I love him, he's great, um, do this technique for one of his faux stones he he didn't particularly give it a specific name he just called it a faux stone um so i'm kind of inspired by the way he did things but i'm not doing it exactly the same but he just gave me the idea it's like a light bulb came on and it's like oh maybe i can do my amethyst after all so i'm just um you know getting this a little bit softer softer and conditioned and it's going to get conditioned as we work with it anyway. So I'm just going to roll it into a little plug to start with, like so. doesn't have to be perfect. But I've just got a little little log that I've flattened on the top, like so. Actually, I'm just going to square it off a little bit, I think, because it ends up going squarer anyway as you work with it. All right, so I've got this little block. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start tearing these pieces off. And because I want fragments running through, I'm kind of tearing little strips and then layering it on top of itself like so. So that's the first colour. And I'm going to take my blade and I'm going to take it blunt side down. Let me just move this out of the way. I'm going to take it blunt side down and chop all the way through to the bottom like so just some little lines and then I'm just going to squish it back together and then I'm going to take some strips of the translucent which is on a setting number six so a little bit thicker than the coloured pieces and I'm just going to randomly slap some of that on there as well Same thing, I'm going to take and slice through again. You can take it in different directions if you want to. And same thing, I'm just going to push it back into a little block. Okay, and then I'm going to take my other colour. And it's got these nice little dark bits here. And same thing, just randomly place it on the stack like so. So you can see you're getting these little different um, shades of colour running through. So that's that colour. I mean they're all, this one's pretty close to this one but this is the, um, wait which one's which, one of them's the Cernit metallic so it's got that little bit of glimmer in it I think this one here. And same thing, I'm just going to pop some translucent on top. I'm not being overly careful, I'm just, it's random slapping of clay on top of a block. Uh, if you can slap clay, you know what I mean. And same thing, just some random cuts running through. You can go different directions. I don't want to overdo the crisscross though because it ends up coming out a little bit um, of a close pattern if you do that. But just the odd one or two diagonal cuts. And then this one, and that's all you're doing, you're just taking each of those colours, layering it on top of the stack, 
and cutting through like so. And then squeezing back together and you can see that I'm actually cutting all the way through to the bottom. You can see the lines. That's what you want. Because you want that colour, that, that pattern to be pushed all the way through. Same thing, stack it with some trans. It's an idea to overlap as well. And that's all you do guys, and you just keep building up the stack like this until you're happy with the amount that you've got. So I'll just do, I'll just keep going. I might as well just let you watch. And you can, you don't have to go in the same order of colors either. I mean, I started with this, but you can then do the next kind of batch and you can even mix and match actually. So you're just getting nice different layers of colour all through the piece. So I just ripped a little bit of each colour um, for that one and stacked it on there. <clears throat> and you can see it it's it's not tidy, it's it's rough. That's what you want. You want it to be uh you know, look, look a little patchy like that. Push through again. get these sides a little bit. Let's just put a little one in there. So just play around, just keep on stacking and cutting, stacking and cutting and layering up those little pieces of colour. And then some more trans on top. Give it a little mush and cut again. And do make sure that you um, squash it back together after each cut. And you can see that some of these layers of colour have pushed all the way down to the, you know, the base of the clay. And then I'm just going to add some more of this lighter stuff here. I think I'm just going to do what I did before and go light to dark. And, oops, don't need that yet. <clears throat> I think I've got a little bit of a frog in my fr throat, a fruit in my throat today. It's this weather, it's like all over the place at the moment. It's like 47 degrees today. It was 34 degrees yesterday. Um, so cold. And then at the weekend, it's going to be in the 80s. The, the, the weather here is crazy. And spring is always such a tease. You think it's finally arrived and then it changes back cold again. I swear the weather is up there laughing at us. It's like, ha ha, fooled you. I mean, it was snowing yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah, the day before as well a little bit. And like I say, the weekend is going to be like a hot summer's day. It's just crazy. And then once the weekend is over, it's dropping back down into the 50s again. It's like, oh my gosh, I just want to get outside and start planting stuff, you know? But oh well. So I'm just carrying on with this, guys. Almost done. I'm just putting this last little layer of these colours on. And like I say, I am being very random. Oops, I didn't cut through that bit, did I? Oh well, it'll be fine. Cut through. push back together and it looks like you didn't have a lot of clay to start with and it wasn't a great deal of clay but now look we've got a, a pretty decent sized block now as we've stacked it up so you don't need to start out with a great big hunk of um, translucent clay in the beginning guys 
because it does get built up. Okay, oops. Just unfold this little bit. And just keep randomly placing little pieces here and there. I'm just going to use some of this up now. We've only got a little bit left, so I might as well just use it. And I think that's good. And there is a little bit left. We could keep going, but I think that's good for now. Squash it back together. And another cut. I'm going a slight angle this time. Like I say, just you can go in whichever direction you want to. And then last piece of trans on top and one final cut. And we're good. And that's all there is to it, guys. Very simple technique, but um, like I say, I tried it the other day and I was like, oh, finally, actually got something that resembles um, amethyst. The kind of ameth amethyst that I wanted to resemble, the, the tumbled amethyst. All right, so once you've got your block, make sure it's all nicely compressed back together. Um, but the other thing I want to do, if you were to cut now, the pattern might look a little bit too close together because of all the different crissy crossy cuts you've put in. And I don't really want it to look too close. So I am actually going to roll it out a little bit just to spread it out a little bit. Okay. All right, so I've just rolled it out a little bit. Now I'm just going to grab a, few, a couple of moulds and fingers crossed this has worked because I have found so many times that I've um, made something off camera and it's worked out great and then when I do a tutorial it's like Ugh. I'm just taking some coffee. Alright so you've got your block now you could do this two ways you could take some thin slices and then just place it over sheet of over a sheet of translucent um, and then you know burnish it till it's nice and flat but I want these fractures to be seen all through the stone rather than it being so flat on a piece of backing clay so I'm going to do it with molds and I'm going to build up the slice the slices within the molds so you're just going to need to take um, a sharp flexible blade and then just start taking thin slices like so and I'm just going to keep cutting these slices and you can see there's quite a bit of variation in shade of colour running through and fractures and all that kind of thing so I'm just going to keep slicing Oops, I don't think this... I really do think I need some new knives. None of them seem to be very sharp anymore. Uh, so just keep slicing through. And as you go through it, you know, it's a variation of colours and shades and fracture. Try and get the pieces as thin as you can because it's all about layering it back up to get that fractured look, to get that layered look. I really hope this works out, guys, because it's difficult, whoops, it's difficult to know until you've baked it, but it's looking okay, I think. See, this is, a, to me, that's a really nice bit. And obviously, as you go further down, you're going to hit that little plug of translucent that you started with. But that's all good as well, because we want to keep some of that translucency within the piece, so you can still utilise that. And I am just going to cut all the way down. 
and I'm going to get like larger pieces of um, the translucent. Now you could use Cernit for this and I was going to but because this is Primo it has a little bit of a yellowish tint to it once baked and I noticed in the tumbled amethyst there is almost like a goldish hue in places on the stone so I thought I might as well just stick with Primo for this um, so it doesn't look quite as white as it would as if you were to use um, CERN it but go ahead and use CERN it I'm not saying you shouldn't I'm just saying that's why I'm using Primo all right so we're nearly at the bottom now and I mean there's a little bit but you can you can utilize this translucent just cut away the purple bits I guess so it's not actually wasted or you could just mix it and get a very nice tran uh, purple translucent but like I say that's so you know you've used that clay and yet there's still this left so you don't need a great deal all right so I've got my slices and I just want to decide how I want this stacked up so I would like quite a lot of the um, translucent showing on the front of the piece so I'm going to go with that and it's just a case of pushing all these little pieces into a mould um, like so that's all you do you just layer it all back up again until you've got that mould filled now if you didn't want to do it this way because you are using quite a bit up of those slices like I say you could just place it on um, a sheet of translucent and just put a few layers over the top and then cut it out but it's not going to have as much dimension or depth if you do it that way so I'm going to do it this way And I'm just making sure that mould is full. Just need a little bit just in here. Just give it a nice push. Make sure the back is nice and flat. I'm just going to give it a little roll. And I think we're good. seems okay I'm just gonna pop this out and that's the first piece and you can just I'm just gonna play around with it a little bit just to make sure it's nice and smooth Oops. But anyway that's the first piece and it's gonna look different again once it's baked and I do see a few divots in there so I'm just gonna give that a little bit of a smooth although I think sometimes the divots actually add to the realism of the look. I'm having a hard time getting my words out again today. I don't know what is wrong with me just lately. I think I've just got like brain fog again or something. But anyway, that's the first piece. And like I say, it's going to look different once it's baked. But there you go, you get the general idea. So there's that one. Let's try a triangular shape. Let's get this uh, bigger piece here and just plop that in there like so. Let's try and get some of this darker coming through. I mean, it is fairly random, but I'm still kind of picking out the pieces I want and where I want them to show, so to speak. Um, once it gets more filled up, I tend to just go with the more scrappy pieces like this one. Because they're just going to be on the back. Just get these little bits and just fill it up. So with that little amount of clay, I mean there's still all this left. I can get another pendant out of that. And don't forget, you've still got this translucent left. I mean there is a little bit of purple on the back, but you could get rid of that. And you've still got... A little piece of trans left so you don't actually 
need a lot of clay. I'm just going to give this a roll. It just needs filling out just a little bit, I think. So I'm just going to push some little tiny pieces in here. Just to fill it out a little bit. Give it another roll so it's nice and smooth on the back. Okay, whoops. I'm just going to take this one out. And there we go, there's another one. And you can see the pattern almost. But like I say, once again, once it's baked, there's going to be some nice translucency in that. So I'm just going to go and put these in the oven and bake them. I'll bake them for about 45 minutes to an hour. And once I've done that, guys, um, I'll be back. All right, guys, they're finished. I um, baked them and then I went ahead and sanded and buffed them. So these are the pieces that I did on camera. So there's that triangle one. Now, I wish I could show you the translucency in these, but I don't have a means to do that. But that's what they look like. And then nicely buffed all over. And the back looks just as nice, in my opinion. So there's that one. I haven't decided how I'm going to um, finish them yet, so I'm just going to show you them as cabochons at this point. And there's the other one that I did. There are there are a few divots in this one. I try to smooth them out, but you know, it's a stone. It's a faux stone, so don't be afraid of a few little divots. But you can see the fractures really nicely in this one. And sanded and buffed all the way around. And then I just made, quickly made another one as well. And same thing, you can see some really nice fractures running through. Sanded and buffed. And this one looks really nice on the back. I love the back, actually. Okay, so there's those three. Now, I did sand and buff those, but I did make another batch prior to doing these, and I resined them. So I'll show you those as well. And then the choice is yours as to which you prefer. But they're the ones that I resined. And I'm thinking... I don't know. I think the resin might bring out a little bit more of the detail, if I'm honest. But, I, you know, as usual, I wanted to show you both ways. So they're the ones that I did before with um, a thin coat of resin. And I brushed the resin on rather than, um, you know, pouring it on. I just brushed a very thin layer all over. So there's those. All right, guys, so there's the resin pieces. So I'll leave it up to you to decide which way you want to go with them. And they're the non-resin pieces, just so you can get a general idea. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later. Bye.